Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of What's Doing, the show where we dive deep into the world of content and creative arts industry. I'm your host Abid, founder and CEO of Creators2, and we have a special guest joining us today. She is a name that resonates with versatility and excellence in the Malaysian media landscape. An acclaimed journalist, a revered actress, an acting coach, and a respected finance board member. It's none other than Madam Fatima Abu Bakr. Madam Fatima's journey is nothing short of an inspiration, bridging two intense worlds of journalism and acting with a remarkable finesse. From her insightful articles that have captivated readers to her powerful performances that have left audiences spellbound. Madam Fatima has established herself as a beacon of talent and dedication. She has graced the screen with her acting powers and nurtured future talents, guiding them with her vast experience and wisdom. Today, we are incredibly fortunate to have her with us to share her journey, insights, and perhaps a few content trade secrets. So without further ado, welcome Madam Fatima. It's an honor to have you on this show. I'm really, really thankful that you have made time for us to talk. Thank you for having me. So without further ado, the first question which I would oh. like to ask is that uh, you had a remarkable journey in acting and, and journalism. Oh. How do you think your experiences in journalism have influenced your acting career and vice versa? <clears throat> yeah, very interesting. Basically, it's all about stories. In journalism, it's all about the story. Acting is the same thing, yeah. So I, um, how to say, I didn't choose, I didn't plan to like, okay, I'll be a journalist and then after that I'll be an, an, an actor. It just happened naturally. I was always very interested in acting, even from school. And I've always, always uh, back then, been very interested in meeting people, talking about people and writing. So that both, I think, came very, very naturally. And yes, in, uh, as a journalist, you meet all kinds of people. And of course, when you meet all kinds of people, you hear all kinds of stories. And then when you, bec when you, you know, and this is what you also meet, uh, you also get in your scripts. Yeah, so you get to, so then in, in a way it helped. It helped me um, broaden uh, uh, perspective wise. It also helped me understand a little bit uh, oh, no, not a little bit, a lot about the people, um, the way they, the way they thought, the way they think, the way they make decisions. Um, sad stories, happy stories, yeah. So I guess they complemented lah. So they, I used to say that I was for the longest time I, I was leading a double life. So I was a journalist in the day, I'm an, an, an actor at night, and I would have to like take leave whenever I had to do my. Uh, I was I started from theatre, yeah. so I would take leave to go and dance in Berlin, in London, you know, and take leave to to do my, you know, to to act, uh, to perform. Um, so yeah, so but I've always felt I was very lucky, you know, to be able to do both, to be a journalist and yeah, to be an actor. Given your extensive background in journalism, uh, how do you view the current state of uh, journalistic integrity hmm. in Malaysia, especially in the era of digital media and social media networking? Okay, when I like old school, okay, so that was like print media and all that. So yeah, so right now, uh, definitely, that's why print media is suffering a lot. Um, we used to be like, everybody would wait to read us. Everybody would wait to get the news from us. And of course, we had to compete with uh, our penny, uh, radio and, and television. But people still waited. Like, for example, even in, in the entertainment world, um, when we do a play, people would wait for the reviews. Especially, we have this column, um, uh, uh, Uteh, uh, by the late Christian Jade. People would wait for his writing. And it was it. That was, that was it. And there were like press conferences where people would wait for us. Yeah, they wouldn't start the press conference uh, until the journalists, the print journalists from the print media came. Uh, then later on, we started uh, losing out. And um, it's very sad because I think old school, I still love uh, the print, print uh, the newspaper, you know. But I've stopped. 
I've stopped reading, I've stopped, uh, stopped uh, buying newspapers because you get the news faster now. Whether or not it's more accurate, whether or not, yeah. Um, but yeah, things are just so fast. You have to keep up with the, with the times. Um, I don't know whether that is a good thing or bad. My worry is because when things are just too fast, um, you get a lot of this fake news. Yep. You get a lot of journalists, reporters who, yeah, who really, uh, anybody, just like anybody can now be uh, a, a, an actor, anybody can now be just <laughs> a, a reporter, you know? So there's no, there's no, you know, uh, doing that kind of, uh, you know, fact checking. No, there's no, not you know, at all. Integrity. The news has to be out first. Whether first. It's, it's right. like, yes, it's like I want to be first. Yeah. So whether or not, you know, the fact checking, you have to wait. It's like when in doubt, don't, doesn't work anymore. Mm. It's more like, yes, I want to be the first. Then after that, oh, I can always apologize. I can always say, oh, you know, I was misinformed. Oh, uh, I, was, I wasn't aware. All kinds of excuses will come out now, you know. So that, that is something that we, it is very unfortunate. It's something that I wish people would be more uh, careful about, but no lah. Yeah, it is this this fight to be first. You know? That's 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 mm. sad actually at this mm. moment. The number of journalists in Malaysia who have succeeded in actors and artists uh, is relatively very small. Uh, Manu Fatma is on the list of journalists who have achieved in both fields. What motivation led? you to the peak of success as a respected journalist and also as an award-winning actor? I don't know all this. Thank you for those, uh, those accolades and all that. But I just felt that I was just doing um, my work, you know, when I was, was a uh, journalist. It was more, I was more in the, um, the features section. Yeah, so more like creative writing, feature section, where you do lifestyle and fashion and gardening and entertainment, of course, definitely. Um, it was only towards the tail end of my career as a journalist when I was the, an, an associate editor that I, I was working with uh, Hard News on the news desk. Yeah. Basically, uh, there are very few uh, journalists who have turned into actors. Uh, uh, means maybe because you were doing entertainment, which, uh, which excited you to get yeah. into the entertainment industry. Like I mentioned, I was already, I had already been bitten by the bug, you know, long time, even when I was in school. So getting, working as a, as a journalist and also like still continuing my acting in the theatre and in film and television was not anything that was, that I needed to think about. It was something like, oh, okay, this is something that I will do. Yeah, it was not like, oh, you know, I have to give up one for the other. No, they, it was never ever... Uh, that choice to... It never ever know. was a choice, yeah, which I'm glad that I never had to make that choice. Uh, yeah, so whether or not, I don't know whether... I think, I'm sure there, there, there are several also who have done that, from, to, you know, from journalism and also to become, yeah. But not at your level. I mean, they might no, be there, yeah. but not to No, my... no, what level <laughs> nonsense. <laughs> no, 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 just but it's just that, yeah, I, enjoy, I enjoyed uh, doing that. But yeah, like I said, you know, I've always enjoyed living that double life. And um, after a while, um, I was very, 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 very disillusioned with journalism. Very much so. It was also at a time where we felt, I felt, that we were not allowed to practice journalism. It was more, it was all, it still is very political. Yeah, so it's depend, it depends on the, which political master that you are serving. Yeah, so that would be the truth then. So I had, for the longest of time before I, I uh, uh, chose to resign as, an, as, as, um, as a journalist, when I was um, associate editor, um, lots of sleepless nights, lots. I had psychosomatic uh, um, uh, uh, issues where, yeah, to go to work, I would have, you know, I would have like major tummy problems, major headaches. Um, I did not like the way things were then. I did not agree, yeah, with a lot of things. Um, 
And so then I told, after so long, I was telling, then I told my husband, like, why am I doing this? Yeah, when I could just like, just continue doing, like, pay more attention to the creative side. And I spoke to several people already who were in, in the industry, uh, and they said, you easily can do it. Earlier on, I was thinking more of the stability. Yeah, I had children, mouths to feed, you know, so being a journalist was more stable. Lah. You know, you have, you know, you, you have this uh, stable income coming in. Um, as opposed to the creative punya, punya industry, then you don't know when it will be your next role or, you know. Um, but then I was told, don't be afraid. The main thing to do is to make that first step, to leave. And yeah, for the longest time I didn't, I, 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 wasn't, I wasn't confident enough. When I find, it was more the push factor than the pull factor for me then, yeah. So the push factor was when I decided enough was enough. You know, it was affecting my health. Um, I was not happy with myself. I couldn't look at myself in the mirror. And yeah, then I find to my husband, is it all right? He said, fine, if you're worried about, you know, uh, finance-wise, never mind, I'm here. Yeah, I'm pretty, pretty okay, um, quite stable. So that's fine. So that's when I decided to, yeah, I, you know, I will leave. And started acting first, I mean, continue uh, acting. And then found a wonderful new love uh, um, as an acting coach. Then I, f yeah, you know, it's like I loved working with people, especially as you, as I got older, I loved working with younger people. They make, they kept, you know, keep me young. And the creative, the process of um, discovering, the process of experimenting, the process of looking at the, 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 the young people whom I work with, or, or, you know, young, or, I mean, the actors whom I work with, the, the, when they realise, when they realise that, oh, so this is what it's all about, when they finally uh, begin to discover their own character, that is lovely. <clears throat> that is what I love. That's what I enjoy doing. And, it's an, 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 and every time you work there, it's an, the, the process is the same. Mm -hmm. You never tire of the uh, of the when they make that make that discovery. So that to me, you know, was lovely. So yes, I finally made the decision to leave uh, journalism. Um, it was not an easy decision to make because I also loved writing. I also loved, you know, what I did then. But like I said, the push factor was just too too strong. I had to leave. Uh, broken hearted, you know, heavy heart left. Um, but I was, I was lucky that there was another world ready to, ready for me to explore, ready for me to, to how to say it, huh? to grow. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. You've seen the Malaysian film and mm. the television industry evolve, particularly in terms of opportunities for women, both in front oh, of the yeah. camera and, and behind. How do you think it has evolved? <clears throat> Like the whole world all over, not many uh, opportunities for, I mean, not, not too many great roles for women as, opposed, as compared to the, the male actors. And definitely lesser, uh, meatier roles for uh, more mature women. Notice I didn't say old woman, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, elderly, you know, for the more... It's not easy out there. People want younger. People want more uh, beauty. They, they want, yeah, so younger, beautiful. Uh, that sells, you know, that sells more. Um, so for women, it is a struggle to get, even like for now, and it, younger, when I was uh, much younger, it was already a struggle then to get good roles, yeah. Um, and now it's increasingly more difficult, but I have been lucky. I have been lucky. Maybe it's because I have been able, I am uh, fortunate enough to be able to choose. Yeah, so, um, so those roles, not many, but they're there. But I wish there were more, because I think the women Punya perspective should be, um, should be out there more. Because it's not so much talking about, uh, about women's stories, but talking about women's perspectives of certain issues. Yeah? Um, like I was mentioning, and like my, my um, uh, colleagues um, who are very, very uh, particular about 
getting the women's stories out there. They would say it's like it's similar to looking at the mirror, holding a mirror in front of you. Um, you see the same thing, but then it depends on how you tilt the mirror. Then you get the different facets, the different yeah. So this is what we want. Women, her 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 roles, her stories are wonderful. Yes. Yeah. It's just that we have not tapped into it uh, deep enough. Right now, most of the time, she is seen as being a victim. Even in journalism, whenever women back then, you know, most of the times actually, when she makes it to the front page or makes the big news, it's most of the time as a victim. Mm -hmm. Most of the So when uh, my colleagues and I in, in the New Straits Times, before my, my, my colleagues, Rose Ismail, Aisha Ali, um, what we did to fight back was um, to make sure that more success, success stories of women are highlighted. So not so much, you know. So, um, so we would go out and, and look for like uh, success stories of women, successful stories, strong women, yeah. So play down on, on yeah, because you get the victim stories are already in, in, the, 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 in, in, the, yeah, in the main paper. So in the features section, we try to highlight, yeah. So like, that's why, like you said, yeah, um, I wish there were more stronger roles for, for women because our stories have... Our, I'm not saying they're not. There are. Lately, there have been more and more, you know. So, alhamdulillah, I'm very happy. But I want more lah. I mean, you know, I think we should have... We, yeah, we all want more, more to see... Yeah, more case. stronger, stronger stories, you know. And there are many Malaysian There are women. many to yeah. be told from... Everyday women, the stories, to also our, our the heroes, you know, you have right away from Chet City Wan Kembang to, to right now to, you know, Tun uh, City, Hasma, many role models, you know, we have the planetarium, punya, punya, you know, punya, uh, 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 hero, heroines. Great, uh, changing gears here. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, in your opinion, what has been the role of Finas in shaping the landscape of Malaysian mm. cinema, and what are the what's the Malaysian Film Board uh, mm. the, the the kind of steps they are taking to further nurture local talent? I tell you, uh, the the amount of I don't know. Whenever you say Finas, there would be a whole lot of people to say that you know Finas is not doing anything. And then again, there'll be a, uh, the other group of people who say that we are, they, they are trying very much. But it's a very slow in process because it is government bureaucracy. The bureaucracy is the one that, you know, is holding back. How to say it? Huh? A lot more, actually. Definitely a lot more can be done. There are a lot of people who are willing to serve on the board. Um, a lot of people, and also not, not necessarily just the board, but just many people who can and willing to contribute. But for me, the little bit that I'm now getting uh, to know of Finas, I mean, the way of working, uh, maybe because I come from the non, uh, how, to, how to say it, eh? the non, um, what's that, corporate, the non-corporate kind of uh, working. It's a little bit difficult also for me. I have to get used to it. But I can see that they are trying. But, but, but the fact that we have the same <clears throat> complaints from like, my God, how many years back, yeah? Uh, and those problems have not been resolved. I really don't know how many more years it will take before we can start to resolve whatever, whatever rot has set in, yeah? I can see the attempt People are trying, and I see good people, people whom I know, yeah. who have gone in and tried their best, um, and yet have not, have also like not been able to succeed in that sense. One of the main reasons is also the time factor. You cannot um, expect any board, subcommittee, whatever, to create uh, miracles in two years. Yeah. yeah, For something to even start to work, to even see the results of, the two years is probably is just the warming up process, you know, yeah. by which time they're already changing. So Finas, to me, I don't know. If you say, do we need a Finas? Some people say no, you know, like dismantle Finas. We don't need no, Finas because people are saying, yeah, I don't. I don't agree. To me, I, we do need. We do need. Yes. We need, yeah, and, and, and um, because that will be our strength. That will be our backbone. 
ya our own uh, film uh, punya film body then again itulah you know how strong can it be how strong how to say it nah um the chances given to finas no, to, to 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 the do their best is trying leadership really hard. is very but then again i mean that's what i'm saying you know but the leadership is on changing you cannot you yeah. cannot cannot you cannot see much results yeah so it's like and every time uh, something changes you this is what i feel if then something changes when you 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 go back a few you know take a few steps back to like start again yeah. it's like starting from zero so that really really uh, it really delays uh, whatever progress that we could have made but yes <clears throat> there, there there is an attempt now i have i have um a lot of i'm very how to say it, um the um, i'm looking forward to to working with this, this new group of people and i have um great respect a lot of respect for them and i think they are really fired up and yeah a lot i'm i'm hoping the good things are coming well, that's great for us also means if a great leadership was was there Definitely, we can yes. always we means uh, go back to them and, and and talk to them and you know Definitely, and to try yeah. to try to they we also we always working against and this is something like you're always working ag- up against a lot of bureaucracy especially with something when you're working yeah um the challenge is there to for you to keep the stamina yeah to keep it going to not give up because it's always easy when you are faced with all these problems yeah. it's always easy to say ah uh, you know i mean you know enough i give up you know nothing is going to change ever ever you know but when well, you start doing that there's a whole industry looking up to finance you know precisely yeah. if you start saying that's it i give up then you know no lah you know no, no, there, there, <coughs> finance will of, always be there yeah, they will always yeah yeah there a lot of law uh, means there a lot of uh, livelihoods uh which are at stake and i think uh, finance as a body has always been very helpful yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and it's younger i can see that it's getting younger and that's the way to go yeah yeah so with the younger uh, uh, uh ideas coming in um the energy will be there the stamina will be there you know so that that is yeah that is very positive now yeah Uh, miss you've seen how the content has been created all through these years how do you think that uh, malaysian films and television uh, television shows at this point of time are representing the country's diverse cultures and communities mm. uh could be better it has improved a lot yeah i would i definitely will welcome more uh how to say it uh, uh stories where you can see truly the malaysian punya spirit there yeah right now <clears throat> um it's very it's okay yeah, more of the stories more of the scripts are in uh, in uh, in uh, in malay but it's fine i don't have uh, a problem with any of the language yeah whether it's bahasa malay bahasa malaysia um or, or or tamil or mandarin or cantonese you know but as long as the spirit the the uh, the feel the malaysian spirit comes through the story and that to me is it's uh, more important so i am very very happy to see yeah, more and more you know and we also have um, more of the non uh, how to say it uh, the more indie more of the indie punya punya spirit more of the indie punya punya uh, movies coming up and some people are saying early on there was an issue <clears throat> with jagat i don't know whether you remember that it was it cannot be a malaysian film because it's uh, i think 80% was in tamil in tamil language but then a lot of people a lot of us fought for it to say that but it is made with malaysians the director is malaysian the actors are malaysian you know so never mind if uh, the language is not a uh, bahasa uh, malaysia but these are malaysians the story is malaysian the heart the spirit the soul is malaysian yep. so how can you deny and then that that you know uh, after that thank god you know people saw reason and yeah fine and then jagat did very well and this is what you know, um hopefully uh, more stories i'm looking forward to more and more stories where we see more of us being comfortable uh being the other 
you know or not yeah. you know i'm yeah. trying to say yeah. yeah so so it's not so much like for example like for me i can be i would love to play you know uh, uh maybe <clears throat> somebody uh somebody's mother from the kampong but very very comfortable talking in 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 uh, in uh, hokkien because i come from from penang so you know is is i can't hokkien wa so you know that kind of thing so so and people shouldn't bat an eyelid or saying oh my god she can do. so i'm waiting for that one day where we can all speak each other's languages with, without any of us saying wah dia boleh cakap mandarin oh dia boleh cakap melayu oh dia boleh cakap tamil i'm waiting for that one day where we can all you know so the malaysian cinema will be about us where we flit through very comfortable be talking very very other you know uh, other uh, other languages and being it, going to each other's skin and yet being truly very very malaysian i'm waiting i'm dreaming I'm for waiting that, for day that. To come. Yeah. waiting for that you know so that's what la It i there happen. was one uh, i've had a few where i say a smattering of of uh, um lines in hokkien Um, my Hokkien is very rusty. I'm from Penang, so I can speak yeah. a bit of Hokkien. My mom's Chinese, uh, but she's Hainanese. I don't speak Hainanese. Um, but yeah, you know, to wait for that where I can even be able to even like you know um, be coached to 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 act in a Tamil film, you know, it'd be it'd be so it'd lovely. Be so, great, yeah. and, so now again switching gears, yeah, well, a very successful uh, daughter who's who's one of my favorites. <laughs> Uh, Sharifa Amani, and how do you balance the role of mother and a mentor in the industry? And oh. what advice do you give to to her and to other young actresses? Oh, okay. To always put your craft before you. You are not important. Yeah. So the moment you think that ah, oh, I am so and so, then stop. Then stop because you're not you're not with it lah, you know. Yeah, for me, that, um, right from that, I've got four. All my four daughters are also um, um, more or less in this line, and yeah, from young, I think also because they've because uh, they've seen me, they 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 go on sets, uh, and then when uh, theatre also they'll go to the you know when I'm rehearsing, um, and they see it as something. Unglamorous, totally not glamorous at all. Okay, <laughs> especially in theatre, you go there, you sweep the floor, you you know, you help put up the props and things like that. So where is the glamour? Where is the not at all? So the main thing is, like I said, it is the work, it is the stories, it is you know. So that is what should be foremost. That is yang depan, you know, yang depan tu itulah kerja kita, you know that. Um, so the moment you think you're bigger than that, then a bit I, I'll be very. So I did tell them that if the moment I think that you all start to get a bit big-headed, I'll be the first <laughs> to be very disappointed. First, huh? first be very disappointed. I'll talk to you very nicely, but if you don't listen, and then, then. Uh, the other mother will come <laughs> out and tell you, "Hello, yeah, you know, jangan, you know, don't be big-headed, you know, yeah." So. This is also what how I I the, the the this is what also I tell all the young people that I work with, yeah. Never 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 always never think that you are too big for you know for what you're doing. Then you lose perspective, lah. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. lose. Then you lose the respect for what you're doing. Well, you, you said it you right. Cannot. You cannot put the art first before you yourself. You must. Yeah. You must put the yeah the craft first. Yeah. Means. As as a regular discussion mm. uh, with the talents who we work with. Mm. And, you know, You know, there is a sort of uh, you know, there's a dream mm. to be coached by you. Where, where really? Exactly. Oh, and that's I'm, lovely. I I'm thought. not kidding. I'm not kidding. And oh, and, uh, and and yeah. uh, uh, they 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 if if we can get coached by uh, Manu Fatma, it will be a dream come true. So this role is also really explored by actors in general. You know, mm. what. motivates you to offer acting classes and you know uh, coaching to all to right. actors it all like i mentioned i went after quitting uh, journalism i went into you know full time more or less uh, into acting but the person and then i said i fell in love with coaching the person who allowed me to do that it was, it was uh, shahmi baba yeah at that time because we start i started in theater with her and then when she went into uh, um television that's when she she 
pulled us all, you know. So we were all theatre people, you know, uh, ragamuffins from theatre. So she put us all in and said, okay, I know I need, I need actors for my television, uh, TV. She was in RTM then, so because she pulled us all in. Um, and then after um, acting uh, with her, um, then she realized why don't you know for um, this this rehearsal process was something that came naturally in theatre. It's a normal, you know, you don't have a performance without rehearsals. Um, so when she went into film and television, she had that. So she said, okay, now I need to work with my actors. Fati, um, are you free? Can we have the sessions? So without even thinking, it was a natural progression. So I said, okay, fine, we'll have the, the rehearsals. And then we work together. She said, okay, this one needs more, uh, more attention here, needs more work on this. This one needs to emote more. This one needs to like come down, put down, you know. Like. Because she allowed me, she included me in that process, I found myself enjoying that. And there was one, there was a moment where... Um, I was not too happy with the scripts given to me, the roles given to me. I didn't, I didn't enjoy so much the acting, but I loved the the rehearsal processes. I loved working with with actors. So for me, although there was one point, it was a, it was a time when I stopped acting. Um, there was no, I, I I was not fully divorced from the whole creative process. I was still involved, but you know, behind the camera. The process of creating, the process of um, discovering, like I mentioned Tadi, discovering um, who the character is, what he or she is, what she, uh, the journey that the character will be taking, and then the end result. All that um, is just, I don't know, it's, for me, it's therapeutic. It's cathartic even, you know, yeah, for me too. So I live, I, okay, you know, when I get a script, I read and I love the character that I'm playing. I also love and <laughs> also act out the other characters, all right? So same thing when I'm working with, the, with, with my actors, it, the process of like, okay, let's discover, and then, and, and the more the, the actor um, understands, it's like snowballing, and then, you know, like you build on each other, put your energy, and, and, and you know, um, that one is, so at the end of it, it's like you're tired, but it's like, wow, you know, and you go home like so high up, you, you uh, yeah, so that, I know when I've had a good session, is when I go home and I can, and, and I'm still hyped up. Yeah, you know, no, it's like when you have like so much, too much coffee that day, yeah. So it's that is super caffeinated. Super, isn't it? Super, and I don't drink coffee anymore because of my gastritis. So <laughs> I used to love coffee, but this is what I, this is my hype now. Just means recalling what you're saying. Yeah. Is it important for actors to go for a coaching oh, part of it before they get into acting zone? Definitely, definitely. And this is something also again coming from the theater. You don't go and perform. You don't go. Uh, you don't go out um, unprepared. So the rehearsal process is so crucial. In fact, for me in theater, the rehearsal process is the most enjoyable, is the most challenging. It's like after the rehearsal process, the opening night in theater, the opening night for me is actually the saddest because yes, it day. marks the end of yeah. our discovery, the end of discovering, the end of playing, the end of experimenting. It's like, okay, that's it. You've already locked down more or less, you know. So it's like 99%. There's so maybe 1% for you to still discover things on stage because every night is different. Um, same thing for when you act in front of the camera. But the rehearsal process is so important. Especially now, you, I keep on getting also uh, many, many raw talent very raw, um, they definitely need help, you know. Um, many of them is, will, will say, yeah, but then, you know, I, I, I go on the set and I hope that the director will help me. The director is not there to help you, my darling. The director has his own work to do. The director is going to direct. So who does he direct? He directs an actor who is there, equipped and ready to give. So you have nothing to give. The director cannot direct. He's not there ready to say, okay, now I'm going to teach you something. Tak boleh. So, you know, people who go thinking that, okay, I will learn on the set. Sorry lah. Ultimately, yes, you will learn on the set. Like for me, I am learning. Every time I go uh, on set, I'm learning something new. But that's not it. You have to go there very, very much prepared. So, um, 
I am very happy now that more and more productions are giving time for their actors, um, setting aside time and budget, you know, to help their actors. Because ultimately, okay, like for example, the late uh, Yasmin Ahmad, her rehearsals will go on for two months, three months. Wow. So her shoot days are 12 days, 10 days. Because on the, for the two or three months that she worked, Everybody is already there. Everybody knows what to do. Even the editor sits in during her rehearsals. So the editor is sitting with her during the rehearsals and during her shoot. He's already editing. Right, okay? So it makes your end uh, work, your, your task, so much easier. Yeah? Rather than go and then barulah nak plot. Okay, this is my blocking. is macam ni. You know, I, you know it's, it's just... And everybody is discovering things. On set, memang tak boleh, you know, and it's a nightmare. And you're the, uh, you know, if you're a director, it's a nightmare yeah. for you to have to deal with that. Exactly. You know, it's like, can you imagine how wonderful to work with actors who know what to do, who already, and then you don't see the actors anymore on set. You see the characters. Yes, that is so lovely. You they, know, they, they pretty much internalize all of it. They have already so worked on so. the script, for and then, yeah, and they are also helping each other. You know, when they're performing, definitely. So it makes your work, your shoot, so much easier. And what you know, so I think the, production doesn't know all the direct means other directors, which mm. we, we, we don't have that kind of you know vision of that. Yeah, that you're you're saving money on, on Def- extra days. Definitely. You Definitely. getting in, you're knocking off all the scenes for the day. Precisely. Because they're all prepared. They're all prepared. They're, yeah, so. yeah. So much prepared. All they need to do is, okay, all right, technically, lah. so it's more like to get the technical bits uh, done. But in terms of um, giving you the characters, they're already living and breathing. Yeah. You know, so it's like, okay, it's just a matter of you putting them, okay, you're, you're the, 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 the blocking. So you're coming from right to left and then you sit down and you take this glass, you put down or whatever. All those are the technical bits. But they are already doing it as, yes, the as the character, you know, yeah. So it makes your, your job so much easier. So that's why the three months rehearsal and uh, 10 days of, of uh, shoot just makes sense, you know, yeah. So means... Uh, while you're educating and guiding these talents, you know, and uh, what are your experience? What, what what all goes behind the scene when you're when you're when you're spending time with these talents? Oh my god! With, with the with the characters they have, with the you know, uh, with, they have to slip into that character to to yeah. bring out the best. Right? Yeah. So what what goes behind the scene for that? Uh, you mean how to to work with them to get them to yes. get into? Okay, first I have to do my homework. So that's why um, when I have especially the individual, um, I also have um, individual um, uh, classes where one-on-one, sorry, one-on-one or even a, a group of, you know, the um, smaller groups of people. But before I even meet them, I need to have the script. I need, you know, because I need to know um, what, how, I need to also have an idea and a feel and how they sound, Sound is very important. That's why, yeah, you know, what they sound like, how they, they the feel, the overall feel. So before I, I meet them, I need to read. So I, I need to get the script before beforehand, yeah? Then it's a matter of not my telling them who they are, but I already roughly have an idea. But so it's a matter of them discovering it for themselves. So it's a matter of also asking the right questions um, and also getting them to talk about it. Because without realizing it, sometimes when they when they are talking about it and this and first I get them to talk, I get them to um, describe the character. Then after that, I get them to talk as the character. So, so after this point, when you talk about just say I I I as the character, um, then you realize that they slowly, slowly, will slip oh, into no slip into without realizing it. They're already like talking as the character but then again that will just be like the tip of the iceberg yeah you need more time right now and i understand the constraints of many uh production houses um time wise budget wise and all that you don't you don't have that much time you don't have that you get budget wise to play around with but ideally and i have worked on films where uh where i worked with the actors for two months yeah for two months one month with just the lead and then the second month with the the supporting yeah the supporting cast coming in um that that every day almost every day for that one month 
for that person to really, really feel comfortable, really, really feel that you know um, that that one that particular um, um, project that I mentioned was uh, Umi Aida in Embun. Yeah. So for that one month, it was just Umi, uh, Umi, uh, Umi Dulu. Um, that one month, wait, one month, three weeks was just Umi, and then Akasha who played the punya support, uh, the the punya uh, sparring partner came in um, later on and also yeah so basically this two the two of them first and then the others came in but it was very important because it was then we had a lot of discussion a lot of uh, improvs a lot of experimenting to find out you know who who is Ambon what is she all about so basically that so I I wish we, we had more more time even like we, uh, uh, Shumi Shami Baba uh, she would um, her rehearsal process also because yeah she's uh, very particular about the rehearsal process, whereby because she knows um, and many directors also know that the rehearsal process will ease your shooting, yeah. punya punya yeah. problems whatever. Yeah. So you have very you know in, uh, intensive rehearsal punya processes you know so your shoot will be. Inshallah, much more easier. Yeah, but I've I, I realized that. It's, it's, it's really very, yeah. 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 So just give. So that's why my I I if Kalabole, I I really really uh, would like to advise. In fact, I implore with you know <laughs> uh, producers and, and directors, give love your cast members, then help them. Yeah, um, give them more time. Because ultimately, everybody will benefit. You know, you, you, everybody, you just feel so good um, doing something that you're so proud of. And people enjoy, you know, watching it. But yeah, and especially if they're raw, they need more time, more time. But then again, yeah, I understand, you know, some people don't have that. I think time, it's, it's you know. evolving. People are understanding the value Hopefully, of it. And yeah. I think uh, that, yeah. that drives me to the next question mm. is basically, where do you see the future of the Malaysian film and television industry heading, especially with the oh. rise of streaming platforms and the digital transformation yeah. of media? Miss, where, where do you think I what it was know. and where it is heading right now? I do. Okay, I can, I, I'm, I'm not a tech person, you know, I'm not, but what my feel is as long as we still have that need to tell our stories, we will be okay, you know, in terms of the platforms. That one, I, I really, I know times are changing. It is not so much now, but like even, even like the cinema now, I, I see things like maybe um, the next uh, few years, uh, cinema operators themselves, I don't know, will, will probably have to close down and go for smaller theatre. I don't know, smaller uh, theatre where, you know, where you, you, you show films for it's an audience of, let's say, maybe 50 or 100 or, you know. But, uh, how to say it, eh? the, 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 the movies are shown like on a loop kind of thing, it just goes on and on and on. So you cut down in your cost, you cut down, but you show more uh, films many more times. And, you know, and I, I don't know. So, but when it comes to our stories being, being told, I think there will be, as long as, as long as we have that need to, yeah. But it is getting better for the, I mean, it, it is, is getting better the now. Competition, yeah, it is better now. Okay, in terms of, um, I cannot, I, I've not set in the producer's chair, so I really don't know that struggle. Yeah, as to which platform to go and and and, uh, but from, I don't know how to say it now. Nah? But I, it has I, I'm evolved. Worried. I am. But it has evolved, right? From what it has, the it quality has. has gone better. Oh yeah, the definitely, performances definitely. have gone yes, better. Yes, the scripts also. Yes, from what I've been uh, watching now. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, we have more, more and more um, talented, uh, you know, young uh, talents, and. Um, it's just, um, I wish there would be more a balance between more roles for our established um, um, actors and, um, and the balance is uh, between to have them together with our rising talents. Uh, when, I'm, when, I'm, when I say rising talents, are people who are also trained 
maybe on the job, you know, like going for rehearsal classes, uh, or maybe coming out from institutions like Aswara, you know, you, you know, the performing arts school. And there's so many of them coming out, but we don't see them on screen. We don't see on, them on television. Maybe it's because, again, maybe conventionally they don't fit the, 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 the ideal or, you know, the, the, they're not pretty enough they're not you know they're not handsome enough or they don't have enough followers that kind of that kind of um, bag that, that kind of weight they may not have it but there are many talents out there just waiting to be plucked many talents just waiting to be given the chance to show what they you know and sometimes I, I, I feel like crying sometimes when I and when I feel their pain you know that they they know they can do it but they're not given the chance and I'm talking across the board, actors, directors, script writers, yeah, you know, um, what role, makeup artists, semua. Just trained, waiting to be used, but where are the, opportunity, where yeah. the opportunities, you know, yeah, so, but um, itulah, hopefully, hopefully, with like you said, more platforms, hopefully there are more doors, yeah, they will open, yeah, they will they will open. open. yeah hopefully, sure. inshallah, yeah, inshallah. Man, Fatima, this year, what are the five best content pieces you have seen on screen? Well, obviously, the, the, the most recent I saw was La Luna. I loved it uh, immensely. I'm so happy for, for Raihan. And I'm happy that for this uh, Singapore-Malaysian punya, punya, uh, um, you know, partnership. And of course, Jagat, which I mentioned, I loved it. Um, uh, Series-wise, what was it? Huh? The... Um, one Cent Thief, huh? Elfie, yeah, you know, I, I, I enjoyed that. Uh, there's just so many. Of course, kalau you talk about uh, dulu dulu, um, uh, Dan punya bunuhan, yeah, that was an eye opener for me. Um, as you know, uh, of course, the Yasmin Ahmad's movies, uh, very close to my heart because I think she spoke um, as a, how to say it, huh? as an innocent Malaysian young girl looking at things, um, um, how to say it, uh, trying to look at things in the broader sense and yet feeling like, oh, you know, I'm a small person, but I can do big things. That, that the kind of spirit. Um, yeah. Um, of course, uh, Imaginor. Oh. Then I was lucky enough to be so involved in that. Um, yeah, quite, quite. Well, that, those are great lines. So right? many, many. Yeah. So that brings us to the to the end of the show. <laughs> Thank you so <laughs> much, Madam Fatma. Really, Thank really you. appreciate you taking time and Thank coming you. to our studio and so being on What's Doing. Okay. Hope to work with you uh, and uh, see you again soon. Inshallah. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rabbit. Thank you, Creative Stew. I love that, Creative Stew. <laughs>